So hello, welcome. Um, yeah, here it is. Wikipedia, I think most of you, all of you, I'm not sure, who hasn't entered Wikipedia? Is there anyone in the room who doesn't use it? I think it's a very um, important thing. If we want to teach children something, we should teach them on things that we know quite well. And that's why I think Wikipedia can really help to educate young people. I call it to learn to navigate the waves of dubious information on the internet, just because it is a reliable source, but it is also a website that most of us, the grown-ups, really know well. We've heard a lot about how parents don't know, how families don't know what is to trust on the internet. The Wikipedia has proved in several scientific studies to be quite reliable. Of course there are things that are errors in there. But there have been errors in the Encyclopedia Britannica. So um, not every page on the Wikipedia is perfect, but all and all compared to many other pages, it is reliable. And it is also very, very, I already said, you know it, but that's also important for the children to know, for young people to know that it is one of the top websites. It has been in the Alexa ranking one of the top 10 websites for many years. I think since last year, it has been one of the top five websites. It is the only non-commercial website up in those regions. That is very interesting to know. Also, we've heard a lot of how the data, the websites are used for exploiting us, basically. Um, Wikipedia doesn't do this because they don't sell the data. Everything there is under free license, so a lot of the data can be taken by other people. We have to be aware of that, but still, it is a very reliable, very well-known source that the children will know, we know that well, so that's good to teach them. And it has made the headlines as being a bulwark against fake news, exactly because also on the very, um, the events that are taking place now, there are articles appearing on the disasters. There are har articles on Hurricane Irma. I don't know if there's one on the Polish website, I didn't check, but they are in the English Wikipedia, they are in the German Wikipedia. So there are also the very current things can be looked up there. And all this is possible because it's done not by people that are paid, but it, all the content that is up there is created by a cooperation of people that do it as volunteers. Um, there's this word of the swarm intelligence, it's called in German. So all, everybody of us knows something, the other one doesn't. Everybody has an idea how this could be done better. And through this, everybody is able to edit. And others look and say, is this what this person added to the article? Is what this person ch changed in the article, is this correct or not? And if many people think it's not correct, it will be, get taken down in a very short time usually, if it's something about current news. So, let me explain a bit more first, before we go deeper in it, the Wikiverse because that's more than the Wikipedia. I already said there's the German language version, there's the English language version, and of course there's the Polish language version, but there's not only the Wikipedia. There's also something called Wikispecies, Wikivoyage, Wikiquote, Wikisource. There are other projects. The whole Wikiverse tries to supply knowledge, data, facts in different ways, and this is also more than just those websites. You can check them out. You will find if you go to the Wikimedia Foundation, if you go to, if you search for Wikimedia, you will find it, all the different projects. And they're all run, the content is all created by the volunteers. But the important is, thing then, those volunteers also compromise a community. It's not, it is random people. I don't know, is there anybody in here who edits Wikipedia? One person, two people, often we don't know each other, and yet 
often we share something very, very important, and that is the desire to disseminate knowledge and to really have true facts out there in the world. The vision statement is that one day every person in the world will be to share, will be able to share in the sum of all knowledge and that this will be provided by the Wikipedian volunteers, the sum of all knowledge to be shared by everyone in the world. So this pride that I take, that many of my colleagues take, is something that makes up the community. How much you take part, if you will go to live meetings, we'll have a wonderful live meeting this weekend in Warsaw with people from Central and Eastern European Europe. Um, but if you go there, if you take part, that's not the important thing about it. The important thing is that we share this passion for knowledge. And this is why fact matters, facts matter. Um, imagine a world in which every single human being can freely share in the sum of all knowledge was and is our goal and we have made it the title of the annual report 2016 because it's so important to us. How do we make sure that it's facts that's on the Wikipedia or the other sites? Well, one of the most important thing is the sources. Wikipedia is a website that often looks very old fashioned. It has a lot of text, but that's also important if you teach children they see this is a well-liked web page, and that's how it looks if it's really reliable. It has a lot of text. It's not just clicky flicker things. It's free of ads. And often you find behind the sentence this little number. And when you click on that number, you can see down at the bottom of the article, that's where this information comes from. Often it's able you will be able to click on that, and you will find a scientific article, another website, the source where this information came from. So this is very important. Sometimes you don't have the little numbers, but you still have sources, but often you have exact references. And you can tell kids, this is also a way to check if it's a good Wikipedia article or not. If there are a lot of sources, the article is better, than another one that doesn't have any, but just has general sources. You can also check the content not only through the article itself, but every article has a talk page or discussion page. And if you click on that, you can see if there is content that was disputed. If there is something that was wrong, for example, for one celebrity, there was a birth date and there was another birth date hmm, what to do? And as far as I remember, she had given a birth date on her own web page, but there were other sources giving different, the different um, birth date. So people discussed. If she is giving it herself, is this more trustworthy? They decided no in this case, <laughs> because the other sources also were older. <laughs> so through this discussion, children, young people can learn how to check facts. Of course, this sometimes leads to conflicts. Not always will the people say, okay, yes, your argument is the better one, we'll do that. <laughs> there will be a lot of conflict, especially on political issues, especially on all those issues we've just heard mentioned as fake news. And so there is conflict management, but that also can be viewed just by the readers. I'm not talking about people already participating, but everybody can go and look how the conflicts are solved. There are meta pages. And there are many more ways, because the Wikipedia is very, very transparent, that you can always check how does the content get there. You learn much, much more if you contribute. And I invite every one of you to try it. <laughs> At least once hit the edit button. Um, but it's very important if kids, and kids can contribute and do contribute. We have very, very young editors that are very successful. Um, they will learn those rules. 
it's not easy and not every kid can contribute. I want to be very clear about that. A lot of kids will have big problems because they will not be able to uphold those rules. The community is very strict. Even in an article about a children's game, about some YouTuber, if you just put in, he's the best and I love him so much, that will be deleted within minutes, possibly within seconds. And some children will not understand that this is not the way to contribute if it's not explained very explicitly, and often they will not have another idea what to contribute. But children can, for example, if they are reading books and an author they love is bringing out a new book, there's a high possibility that's not yet in the article if it's a not so famous author. So they can add, there is this new book, and they will, can be proud because the whole world can see that this is now on the internet. So they will come in contact with the community. The community will be very strict about the rules of sourcing and only things they contribute that are, they are able to prove this is actually a fact will stay on. And this is a ha very high motivator for kids. If they can add I don't know. Also, if they're interested in sports, the newest um, things there, group there, team there, favorite sportsman has made. If they are the first ones to hit the edit button about the new goal the soccer team made, it will be there for the whole world to see. And that is a high motivator. But if they put in something that is just a lot of Teachers tell kids to get information from Wikipedia pages. And what happens is that the kids open this page, but they are bored, and they hit the edit button, and they put in just something absolutely hilarious. Or they will just put in something about the neighbor sitting beside them. And this content will be deleted, of course, in a very, very short time. And sometimes the page will be closed for editing, not every, because the community says, we don't want that. We don't want in an article about some kind of um, a hammer um, to read that Hassan is a bit stupid. <laughs> so they will not be able to edit this article. And they will learn that's something that's not to do. Please put in something that has something to do with the content on the page and that is new. Also. We help new users. So if somebody wants to contribute and wants to learn the rules, they are sometimes a bit difficult, but there are mentoring programs in every language version. So kids, young people, and if they say I'm young, they can say I want a young mentor, for example, and somebody will take care and look that they get the information that's good for them and they can learn the rules. Again, it's volunteers doing the mentoring. It's not paid people. So sometimes it might not really work out perfectly. It might be somebody with not the best pedagogical skills, but still there's a good chance it will work out. And that is really true that Wikipedians love to teach. Again, the ideal we want to share the sum of all knowledge. We share it online. That's why we do it. We don't get paid. We spend a lot of time sometimes online. Um, we research things with a lot of pain. We go to libraries, we research online, and we want to share that. And so we are very, very happy if there's young people, children saying, I want to be part of this. Tell me how it is done. And usually, if you're not having an official mentor, you will find somebody who says, oh, you have a reference, but you made a mistake in the coding. It's not put up the way it should be. I can tell you how to do that. Or you put in a reference, but it was a very weak one. Let's see if we don't find a better source. If there's not something from a mainstream media, you put in a blog of a friend and he quoted from the mainstream media. Let's see if we don't find the original source and then 
we have a reliable source and the edit you made will be kept. And again, to have an article that you have written yourself that is on such a web page, I think that is a really, really good way to be proud of oneself. However, the Wikipedia is not in itself the community a safe space. It is up to us to work with the children and make it a safe space. There is this big number of volunteers contributing and lots of them are very kind. They love to teach, I said. A lot of them are very brilliant. And I met many of them and I'm really glad to have them as friends. However, in a large group of people, you will always find somebody who is unfriendly, unkind, there is incivility. Some of the conflicts I mentioned before are done with a lot of hate. There is hate speech on the discussion pages. It often gets deleted, but not always. Not always somebody steps in and says, hey, that's no way to treat another contributor. Please, let's stay neutral, let's stay friendly. Sometimes it really gets out of hand and there are escalations. There even are pedophiles trying to use the Wikipedia as a recruiting space. We are aware of that. The team I'm working with at the foundation is doing its best to get those users off the Wikipedia, to get the official... Um, no, I'm losing my words. <laughs> to get the police involved and to get this behavior to stop. But of course, I think you know that it's not always possible to stop it before something happens. So we have to be, be aware of that and not tell the children just go there and have fun. But we have to tell them go there, check out who are the users that are friendly and nice, if you have problems, if somebody addresses you in a way that is not so friendly, come to me, show me what is happening, let's talk about it. The Polish Wikipedia, oh, I'm being faster than I thought. <laughs> the Polish Wikipedia has not a special program for young people. The German Wikipedia does. They have an extra group they call the Young Wikipedians, where underage Wikipedians can exchange experiences, work together, learn from each other. The Polish Wikipedia doesn't have that. They have single users that are teachers, that sometimes do programs on their schools, um, but there is not one concentrated effort. Still, the Polish Wikipedia does have a history of being very welcoming to young people. The administrators, that's the people who decide if somebody gets blocked for a certain time, if a page gets um, closed for editing for a certain time. That's a very important position within the community. The youngest person where we know the age, often we don't know the age, the youngest person that we know the age of that got those rights in Poland on the Polish Wikipedia was 13 years old. So a whole community of people dedicated to knowledge trusted this young person to make such decisions. And they knew he was 13. So this shows that this is a community that is very open to working with young people. Personally, I do know the youngest Wikipedian that I, I know who contributes is nine years old. He has the advantage of having two parents that also contribute, that can look at what he's doing. But that's not very unusual that they start at a young age to try it. And some of the most successful contributors have started at a very young age. And often they, in the beginning they just do little edits or they do them in a very um, small frame of um, articles that just edit on, as I said, their favorite YouTube star, um, their soccer team, something like that. But then they develop more and more and they get really important for the movement. And they also have a very good chance 
in other places through the skills they learned editing Wikipedia. It's skills I can't really de describe sometimes because it's skills that have to do with how to mediate conflicts online, how all those things we, that were talked about in the talks before, how to fact check, that's all the skills that you need to have a good Wikipedia article. So those that start early, they learn a lot. And the Wiki Polish Wikipedia, there's also a mentoring program. I mentioned this before. It's called the Wiki Guides. Wiki, <laughs> and now I can't produce, uh, so pr pronounce it. Przewodniczy, is that right? No, absolutely not. But you can find the link in the presentation. And there's also a very active help page. So new editors that come and have questions and go there, I'm assured by the Polish community, really get good help there. Um, the Polish community, I asked about that also, is very doing very um, intensive discussions about hoaxes, about fake news. That is also something that can, all, Everything in the Wikipedia always can be found online. Sometimes it's difficult to find it because everything is kept. We don't forget. We keep every single discussion. But the Polish community is doing intensive discussions about such things, which sources are reliable. There, is black, there exist blacklists of unreliable sources in every language version which, for example, Breitbart News in English Wikipedia will usually not be accepted as a source, um, but it might be accepted for some um, information about a person from that more or less private information, like the birth date um, for a person from that political angle, not about the birth date of a left-wing person. <laughs> so that's how other websites are looked at, is it a reliable source, is this not a re reliable source? And there are a lot of such dis discussions also on the Polish Wikipedia. The main thing, and why Wikipedia is really a good way to teach, is that it's fun. This is a peach picture of the meetup of the young Wikipedians from Germany. It's done in a way that they can't be identified. It's a group picture, the Wikipedian way. <laughs> also the safety of the users. There are a lot of people that are very knowledgeable about coding, internet safety, all the possibilities of hacking, and they take care to teach that to the young people. And this is a very simple safety me measure, not to take a group photo where people can be identified and still have something where they remember <sighs> It was a good meeting, and we had fun. You can ask me some questions now, but if you have questions, I think it's also very important. Where can you turn to after the talk? Where can you turn to? I mean, you can come to and ask me things at lunch. But you can also contact one of the email addre addresses I have given on the slides. The first one, the info, that's where you get answers from volunteers. And most questions about how to contribute, about content, about disputed content, can be answered by the volunteers. They're doing a wonderful job also in that respect. But if you're not satisfied with their answers, or if it's something that's more concerning the foundation, the organization that runs the Wikipedia, you have the answers at wikimedia.org. This will go to me and my colleagues, and if we can't answer it, we know whom to ask and whom to refer to. The third one is a very important one if you're working with children, that also goes to direct colleagues of mine, the emergency ad, or sometimes I will look at it, that's if there's a real emergency. If you have some, you see something, and people will post the most stupidest thing on the Wikipedia. They will also post very dangerous things. They will post about 
planning a terrorist attack. And it can be just a student's hoax, somebody who just read something and wants a lot of excitement, or it could be something that's really happening. This is something that should be reported through the emergency ad. Everything that's really disturbing in such a way that you think immediate action needs to be taken can be reported to the emergency ad. I forgot another important one, but you can put that either to the answers ad or if you remember the simple legal ad. It's not so difficult to remember. That's if you ever should find something about child pornography. We are very so serious about wanting to take down such content as soon as possible. Usually it's done by the volunteers within minutes, sometimes seconds. Um, it's not something anybody of us wants to have on the websites. But if you ever should come across something, please do report either to the legal ad, if you remember, or to the answers ad, and we will act very, very fast, as fast as possible. Okay, that is it. Thank you very, very much for listening. And be bold is one of the main rules of the Wikipedia. The camel of knowledge moves on. Also the author, if any of you want to have contact with the Polish chapter of the Wikimedia, of the group of people that are organizing the Polish Wikipedia, I'm meeting them this weekend, so if any of you wants to give me a business card, wants to give me a contact and say what they need, what they want, I can pass that on because I think they are also interested in schools, in educators as people to work with. So this is an offer um, that's especially easy this weekend to get the contact going. So thank you very much. Are there any questions about, yeah, okay. Uh, thank you for your presentation. It's very interesting. Uh, I'm from Ukraine and um, I want to ask you about um, child abuse online that you mentioned. If you see some information about child abuse, uh, what uh, do you do? Only put down this information on you have contact with the police? Yes. Um, we have contact with the FBI that will then contact the according um, police in your country or wherever. Often, the co um, if you're the one seeing it, that doesn't mean that the content comes from Ukraine. It could be originating somewhere else. Um, if we can, find, not always can we find out where the content came from, but if we can find out about that, um, we will give this also to the FBI. They have more possibilities to check, of course, than we have. Um, and they will contact those authorities that are the ones that can act on it. Other questions? Um, here? No. Um, but that's, I mentioned that just to tell you, don't, I was saying so much, it's reliable, it's wonderful, it's good. And I just want to make sure you're aware it's not an absolutely safe space. It's very, very rare that those things come to our attention. <laughs>